everyone welcome to the next session of finite element analysis i am solving question 2 of direct application of eme analyze the step bar given below this is the step bar this end is fixed and here there is a load of 5 kN tensile here i can see a 10 kN compressive type the length of the two bars are given to me their value of young's modulus and area is also given now before solving the numerical i do a quick calculation over here that is of the value of e it is 200 gigapascal i want to convert everything into newton and mm so this will be 2 into 10 raised to 5 newton per mm square and this value will be 0.7 into 10 raised to 5 newton per mm square for finding the solution i'll start with step 1 which is discretization diagram so i'll just write down discretization now for the diagram i will see this figure given to me these two are the ends so i'll be marking two nodes at these two points i'll start with one over here there is a change of cross section there is a sudden loading over here and also there is change of material so this is the point where a node is supposed to be marked so i can see three nodes and i can see two elements two bars given to me so this is how i have marked in the given figure and now i'll draw the discretization diagram for element 1 element 2 element 1 is between node 1 and 2 element 2 is between node 2 and 3 so this is the discretization diagram required next i'll go to step 2 that is development of eme the equation is ae upon he 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 u1 u2 raised to e is equal to p1 p2 raised to e i'll solve for element 1 it'll be a1 e1 upon h1 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 u1 u2 raised to 1 is equal to p1 p2 raised to 1 the value of a1 is 150 e1 is 2 into 10 raised to 5 h1 is 50 when i solve this portion i get 10 raised to 3 and the number i get is 600 so i'll just multiply 600 inside there are few terms i did not mention in the previous session that is the square matrix over here is called as stiffness matrix the variables over here are called as primary variable and this is called as secondary variable these two i have already told you this is called as stiffness matrix and the other thing which you need to remember is these brackets which are used are specific to these terms and they should not be changed so write the brackets which are given to you in the standard format so this is the first thing that i obtain here i'll write down that this is for element 1 element 1 is between node 1 and 2 so 1 2 1 2 next i'll write the eme for element 2 for element 2 a2 e2 upon h2 one once i substitute i'll get 100 into 0.7 into 10 raised to 5 upon 50 on solving this i get a 10 raised to 3 outside and the term is 140 which is to be multiplied inside element 2 is between node 2 and 3 so here i'll write down 2 3 
टू थ्री नेक्स्ट आई फॉर्म द जी एम ई यूजिंग एलिमेंट वन एंड टू विच इज माई स्टेप थ्री सो स्टेप थ्री इज डेवलपमेंट ऑफ जी एम ई आई फर्स्ट राइट अ टेन एस टू थ्री टर्म आउटसाइड देन आई हैव वन टू थ्री एंड आई हैव वन टू थ्री You are I write down u one, u two, u three is equal to p one, p two, p three. Now for element one, it is between node one two one two. Value is six hundred. So I'll place here one two one two, six hundred minus six hundred minus six hundred and six hundred. For element two, the value is between node two three two three. Value is one forty. So two three two three, I place here plus one forty, minus one forty, minus one forty, and one forty. There is no element between node one and three, so these two terms are zero. Next, I'll go for step four. Imposing of boundary conditions. Now the variables that are unknown to me are u one, u two, u three, and I have p one. P two, P three. I'll refer the main figure given to me in the question. Node one is fixed. At node three and two, I can see some loads being applied. So I'll start with U one being zero, and I'll write here node one is fixed. Now since node one is fixed, obviously it will apply some reaction force. So P one will be question mark. The value of P two is ten kilonewton, and P three will be five kilonewton. I'll just check the direction; they are opposite, so I'll use a negative sign for ten kilonewton and a positive sign for five kilonewton. So here I'll write down minus ten into ten raised to three newton, and this is five into ten raised to three newton. If this is a value given, obviously I'll have to find these two values. So these are the three unknown. I have a three by three matrix because there are only three nodes, as I have told you before. The highest number of node will determine the order of the matrix, and the three unknowns that I can solve are u two, u three, and p one. Now, on finding these values, I'll first check the primary variable. Only one value over here is zero, so I'll go to this equation, and I'll write here u one is zero. When this term is zero, I can, for time being, just forget this, the first one, the first column. After some time. i can again revisit and use it for calculation of p1 for now i am going to just not consider these two i'll only write this much equations and calculate my value of u2 and u3 so from here i'll take 10 raised to 3 outside this will be 740 minus 140 minus 140 and 140 the second bracket is u2 u3 is equal to P two is minus ten, P three is five, and ten raised to three is outside. So these two will directly get cancelled out from both the sides. And now I'll multiply these terms. On solving these two equations, I get the value of U two. As minus eight point three three ten raised to minus three mm, and U three is zero point zero two seven four mm. Now I'll go back to this and I'll write the equation for P one. I'll have six hundred U one. U one is zero, so I have only minus six hundred U two because this term is also zero is equal to P one. Now here ten raised to three is written. You can see I have written ten raised to three here, common outside. So obviously I should be writing a ten raised to three here as well. So my equation is ten raised to three minus six hundred u two is equal to p one into ten raised to three. The ten raised to three gets cancelled. Therefore, on substitution of u two, I get p one as four point nine nine eight kilonewton. Now I'll go for check. Summation of force in x direction is zero. My P one plus P two plus P three is equal to four point nine nine eight minus ten plus five. I get the value as minus two into ten raised to minus three 
kilo newton which is approximately equal to 0 hence i have checked next i'll go for calculation of stresses in the element the formula is sigma e is equal to e upon h e minus 1 1 u 1 u 2 raised to e for element 1 sigma 1 will be e 1 upon h 1 minus 1 1 u 1 u 2 today i am writing directly because i have already showed you in the previous numerical element 1 is between node 1 and 2 so the two displacements are u 1 and u 2 value of e is 2 into 10 raised to 5 this is 50 minus 1 1 0 and this was minus 8.33 into 10 raised to minus 3 on solving this i get the answer as minus 33.32 newton per mm square since I get a negative value, I need to justify. So, I'll write down sigma 1 is actually 33.32 Newton per mm square. Negative sign indicates that it is of compressive type. Next, I'll solve for element 2. Sigma 2 is E2 upon H2 minus 1, 1, U2, U3. This is 0 0.7 into 10 raised to 5. Upon 50 minus 1 1 u 2 is minus 8.33 into 10 raised to minus 3 and u 3 is 0 0.0274 on solving I get the value as 50.022 Newton per mm square I get a positive answer so this is of tensile type So this is how the numerical is supposed to be solved. I hope you have understood the numerical. With this I end the session. I will see you in the next session with another type of numerical. Thank you.